That is what we would call the face of social acceptability, normality. This lady would not be out of place in Marks and Sparks, Debenhams. If she went to a community centre or a church, she would be greeted, she would be welcomed, maybe invited for coffee. Next one. What about this lady? That's in the street in South Tel Aviv. You see where the umbrella is? That's her home. That's where she lives. Heroin addict. And we walked down those streets with a gal. We actually prayed for a guy before. That is the street where you get heroin, because they're all different streets. Streets for heroin, streets for crack cocaine, amphetamines, and there's a good three or four streets of prostitution where all the women are stood there selling their wares. We prayed for a guy called David who said to us, he said, I'm ashamed because my wife and children don't know I'm doing this. So we said, can we pray for you? He said, yeah. So we prayed for him. Then we went down, and this is Okshana. Egal introduced us, we talked, and then Egal said, can we pray for you? So I prayed, and Egal prayed, and you see on the floor there, that is what the whole street is like. It is littered with drug paraphernalia, but she lives there. And we prayed, and I prayed. And after we finished praying, she stood up. And I just gave her a big hug. And I said, God is going to work in your life. And I had this feeling that, that surrounded me. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it now. I couldn't explain it then. But I said, God loves you. Egal loves you, and I love you. And she said, thanks. And in her bag, she had a battered test, test, New Testament that she carried for six years. And her favourite scripture was John. Next slide, please, young man. This is later... You can see the sores on her face are now healing up. And we prayed, every week we pray for this lady. And even here, she's being prayed for. And then, she went missing. He got lost around the streets. No one knew. There's only three reasons you leave those streets. You're dead, you're in prison, or you're in rehab. But the gal asked around, no one had seen her. Six months, and we continued in prayer. We continued communication. He continued looking. Last Sunday, I was sat at home, and my phone pinged. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to church, but it was the gal, the WhatsApp message. And I opened it. And when I opened it, this is what I saw. Next slide, young man. That is the same woman. Five months clean. That's the power of God. The power of prayer. No one has to be an addict. She came from the Ukraine of Alia, which is the right to enter Israel if you're a Jew. She has a degree in electrical engineering. She got married, had a good job, had a daughter. Her husband smoked weed. 
and she pleaded with him to give up and he never did. Then she lost her father and became depressed. So her husband got her on weed. And that wasn't working. It did at first, but then it didn't. And he said, I know a man who can help you. And introduced her to cocaine and heroin. Within a year, she'd lost her house, she'd lost her job, her husband was in prison, and her daughter had been taken off, with, off her to go and live with her mother. She'd been reunited with her daughter and her mother. And she's been clean five months. I'm going to read what Egal, because it, this testimony will, will go on our new website. She had kept God's word close to her at all times, even during the darkest of days. And the light shone in the darkness as she discovered that Jesus was the Messiah and her Savior. I praise God that he brought a harvest in from the gospel seed that I was able to sow in her heart eight years ago. Eight years of nurturing that one seed, that is the fruit of the prayer and the nurturing. You know, the most poorly attended service is corporate prayer, not just in this church, in all churches. And even a false prophet I came across said there's no scriptural basis for corporate prayer. What about Jehoshaphat? When the enemies were coming against them, 2 Chronicles 20, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. And we know the outcome. They gathered near the brook of Aziz. And Jehoshaphat went round saying, sing, praise, pray. God confounded the enemies and defeated them. Acts 14, sorry, Acts 1.14 These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Acts 12.12 12. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. We see what the false prophets do. There's no scriptural basis for corporate prayer. Of course there is. Rubbish. That young lady is 3,000 miles away. The power of prayer is not limited by distance either that way or that way. God's power is not limited. It's limited by lack of faith, lack of belief, and lack of a melted and contrite heart. That's what limits prayer. If we limit the Lord, the Lord cannot work in us. But if we open ourselves to God, totally, He will fill us, He will work through us. The weakness is not God's. The weakness is ours. Egal and I continued praying for Oksana, even though the picture was bleak. Even though it was so bleak, she'd gone missing. 
And it would have been so easy to say, oh well, we've prayed. What more can we do? We've prayed. It's in God's hands now. Yes, of course it's in God's hands. That's where we put it. But that's not how it works. 1 Thessalonians 5.16 Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Pray without ceasing. Spurgeon once said, Pray without ceasing, or else your flower will fade and your spiritual fruit will never ripen. Continue in prayer till the last moment of your life. And that is true, because when's the last moment of our life? We don't know, do we? Only God knows when that is. We've got to pray. We've got to pray and pray. You know, people talk of signs and wonders. We have signs and wonders. You know, we've seen Bob Carroll here. Cancer disappeared. And he went into hospital for a routine scan. And they found a big tumour ready to burst on his spine. It wasn't cancerous, but it would have still paralysed him had it burst. So, he had to go for an operation. They kept him in hospital. And at one point, he said, I feel down. He felt down. And then he read the scriptures. And he bounced right back up again. And he prayed. And he bounced right back up again. And as he says here, he was on fire for Jesus. He was on fire for Jesus in that hospital. Loads of people prayed for him. And today he's recovering. The operation was a success. And he says, I am blessed. Prayers are always answered. Okshana's prayers took eight years. No one gave up on her. Egal did not give up on her. When we want to seek the Lord to find favour with him, we've got to set ourselves to seek him. We must do it with a fixed determination. We've got to have it fixed. And it's got to be with sincerity. The sincerity of intention and with all our energy and enthusiasm. And we must have a resolution in our hearts to keep seeking him. And what does it say in Hebrews 11.6? He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And he is. The proof is all around us if we care to look. Hebrews 11. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Just look at Hebrews 11. It's all about faith. It's all about faith. Noah. Noah's in the middle of, of the land. No water near him. And God says, I'm going to bring a flood. In. And he had faith for 120 years. He had faith in the Lord that he would bring the flood. Abraham, Abel, Enoch, Sarah, Moses, Rahab. They all had faith. They all had that strong faith.
And there are evil powers. As we just mentioned, Bob in hospital. Somebody got to him to bring him down. But it wasn't long before he bounced back up. And we're in a, you know, there are tremendous diseases. But Jesus is a healer. There's no case too hard for him. Say, the Lion of Judah will break every chain. He came to relieve the oppressed and set the captives free. Think about these words. He came to relieve the oppressed and set the captive free. And he came to bring redemption. He came to bring redemption. You know, we're sometimes captive. Captives to ourselves, captive to our well-ordered, comfortable lifestyle. Chained to the good things in life. And sometimes we oppress ourselves because things don't go our way. We put ourselves in bondage. It's not about our way, it's about God's way. Just look at this pestilence. There's so much going on, but God has looked after us. We're here today, there's people on Zoom. I know some people have had good results. God is looking after us during this pestilence. But as we said, there is bad out there. People panic buying. Not following the rules. Stealing PPE and selling it. And I know that's happening locally. Rising domestic abuse. It's not for us to condemn them. It's for us to pray for them. We are not to set ourselves up as judges. We need to pray for them. What did Jesus say in his parable about the wheat and the tares? Let the tares grow. I will harvest them at the end and burn them. It's not for us to burn them. But we must reach out to as many as we can before his return. We need to do that. And prayer is one of the most powerful forces in our armory. John 6, 28. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered them and said, This is the work of God, that you believe in him who sent me. Wow. You know, I, was re I was reading a book because this has given me plenty of time to study Smith Wigglesworth. And he was at a healing meeting in one of his, his missions. And a woman came up to him who couldn't hear. And she asked him, can God heal me? And he said to her, just believe. And she went back into the audience, dissatisfied and disgruntled because her hearing didn't return. But she came back the second night and she shouted at him, tonight I am going to believe. And she was cured. See, the first time she came feeling. She came feeling the first time. The second time she came believing. That's what we need to do. Believing. 
We need to believe. You know, I ask people, I've heard people say, oh yes, I believe. Oh yeah, I believe in God. And you just know that it's lukewarm to say the least. We need to lift ourselves from this ordinary place into an extraordinary place with God. We need to take our relationship and our closeness to God to the next level. To our great God. And I'll tell you now, spiritual mediocrity is leaving the door open to the devil and his lying, deceitful, confusing ways. And believe me, he will suck that person dry who falls that way. We will get more out of God by believing for one minute than shouting at him all night. Let us be a church of belief. Let us be a church of passion. And let us most of all be on fire for Jesus. Amen.